So um, let's make like a bolster kind of thing. Let's do that for a minute. Um, roll up a blanket. I've rolled up my blanket into this little like little burrito. If you have two blankets, I would recommend that too. Like rolling two blankets up to make something like a little bit larger. We're gonna get started in that prone position where you lie down with the blanket roll underneath your low belly or underneath your, um, your hip points. So you can get there whenever you want. Oh yeah, and you can turn the music on like right as you get started. <laughs> I feel like now would be a good time for that. <sighs> so, yep, come to lie down on our bellies. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So for those of you just joining us, we are rolling up a little blanket and coming to lie down, placing that blanket underneath the low belly or underneath your hip points. And you can just press play on the music. If you'd like to use music this morning, maybe you just want to listen to the quiet <laughs> or to the birds. That's also totally fine. <sighs> Good. Just giving yourself a little bit of time and space to get settled in. Mm, perfect. All right, and as you get settled in with that blanket underneath your hips, can you just kind of take notice of how the low belly is feeling this morning and how your low back is feeling? Hey everyone. <laughs> hey again, if you are just joining a rolled up blanket underneath the low belly as you come to lie flat. Yeah. Hmm. Right. Right, so our low belly, our low back, our hips, <laughs> all of these parts of us can um, hold so much, so much tension, hey, discomfort. Hey, but it's also kind of known as the seat of creativity, our creative force. Right. So as you breathe deeply here, you take notice of the subtle movements that are taking place around your pelvic bowl. Mm, good. Thinking about deepening the breath so that that movement becomes a little bit bigger. Feeling the glutes rise and fall even. Good, and even if we don't think of ourselves as creative people, we are constantly in the process of creating something. <laughs> right. Maybe it's not art, maybe it you know, isn't on the page, but maybe we are creating um, you know, the right words to say. Maybe we are creating a little bit more of um, a calm and positive energy within our own lives. Maybe we're creating chaos, who knows? <laughs> right, as humans, we have no choice but to create <laughs> in so many different forms. And so let's take maybe another 10 deep breaths here. If you have your head turned over to one side, go ahead and turn it on over to the other side. Mm. 
So today in this class, we're going to be focusing on our conception vessel meridian, which kind of um, runs down the whole front of the body. And it is said to be the confluence of all yin meridians in our physical body, in our energetic body. And interestingly enough, it starts in your pelvic bowl, obviously. <laughs> the first point is located on your perineum. And then it goes up the front of the body, through the throat, and the final point um, where it can be accessed is actually right underneath your lower lip, right in that little uh, part where there's the crease for your chin. But then it keeps on going up into the eye socket. So interestingly enough, our creative force is linked with our vision. Good, and taking time here just to breathe deeply. You might imagine the breath moving up from the pelvic bowl up to the eyes on the inhale, and from the exhale back down into the pelvic bowl. Nice. Great, and, and here you might want to stack your hands and rest your forehead on the backs of your hands and just kind of rock the head from side to side. Good. And if it feels like your eyes are tense, <laughs> oh, we're spending so much time looking at screens, so you will not be alone if that's the case. <laughs> your eyes are tense. See if you can really soften those muscles for a moment or two. And Right, and then from here, let's extend those legs out nice and long behind, point through the toes, tops of the feet down to the floor. Good. Right, and then we're going to point the toes up towards the ceiling, bending at those knees, and rock your lower legs from side to side here. Good. You might even take your feet and kind of keep them together, sort of, and move both of your feet around in a big circle in one direction a few times, and then in the other direction a few times. And yeah, maybe the rocking of the head continues as you do that. But see if you can keep the rigidity out of your shoulders as you rock those lower legs from side to side around in a circle. Good. All right, and then let's set those legs back down behind us. And we're gonna slide the right knee up towards the right side of the chest, coming into your half frog pose. You might still have that blanket underneath your low belly and you're welcome to keep it there. You might also consider like balling it up and taking it right underneath your right hip point or in the right hip crease or even under the knee. And so getting yourself kind of set up here so that maybe there's a little bit of pressure on the inside line of that leg. Good. Or maybe you want to just get rid of the blanket altogether and that's great. Good. And let's stay here for a while, either turning your head to one side or the other, or maybe you want to continue with that rocking, your head uh, rocking side to side, your forehead on the back of your hand. Good, and the deepest breaths you can muster this morning. Nice and slow, in and out of the nose. If in and out of the nose isn't working, then feel free to just breathe deeply any way you need to. Yeah. 
Good, another 10 big breaths right here. And if you want to extend that right leg out long into the side, that's a thought. Good, and notice those shoulders again corners of your eyes and breath so deep you can feel movement through that right hip into the low back Good, last two deep breaths right here. Good, and then from here, let's slide that right leg nice and long behind you. Good. As you slide that right leg nice and long behind you, prop yourself up on your left elbow. And now we're going to reach back for that right foot with your right hand. Good. And stretch through the quadriceps a little bit. It might make sense for you to lower your upper body down if it feels better in the shoulders. Good. And taking a moment here just to find some space through that right knee. Good. One or two more deep breaths here. All right, and then release that right leg down and take your hands underneath your shoulders and we're going to make our way up onto hands and knees. And stay with me. We're going to extend that right leg nice and long behind and then tuck that right knee around. So your right knee will be to the outside of the left knee, like you're crossing your thighs. And then let's just take a couple of little cats and cows here. It might feel super awkward. <laughs> Maybe it feels really good. Who knows? Okay, just a few moments to move the pelvis around, kind of um, tilting the pelvis forward, backward, up and down. You might even send the hips side to side a little bit. Good. A couple more deep breaths. All right, and then unwind that right leg. Let's bring the knee down, and we're going to shift ourselves back into child's Good, and as you take your child's pose, your arms could be extended out nice and long in front of you. Okay, you might decide to wrap the arms around you though, especially if you've been experiencing a lot of um, upper back or neck tension, <laughs> shoulder tension. Good. Just taking some time here to get yourself set up in what hopefully is something somewhat comfortable. <laughs> and if it isn't, find your belly again, because eventually we're all going to get there. And let's stay for a couple minutes, breathing deeply. And with that deep breath, feeling the pelvic bowl sort of expand and contract just from your breath. Again, rest those eyes. See if you can touch the tip of your tongue just behind the teeth, the upper teeth. Soften your jaw. Good.
Good, just about seven more breaths right here. Oh yeah, and if you're feeling like a little bit of activation or upside down time, you could roll forward onto the crown of your head for a few moments maybe. Okay, a little bit of a rabbit pose. So the conception vessel um, runs down the front of the body and then there is kind of like an equal and opposite counterpart, the governing vessel. Um, that runs down the back of the body and it actually has a point right at the top of the head. <laughs> and if all is going well, these two are working in harmony, the governing vessel and the conception vessel. And another nice little thing about that point on the top of your head is that it is fantastic for um, congestion. <laughs> if you're feeling a lot of congestion from allergies, it could be a nice way to relieve some of that. And a few more breaths. Nice. Good, and then we're gonna take a little bit of time to find our bellies again. If you are feeling inclined to find a downward dog or something like that, you're welcome to. If you just wanna like slither yourself forward onto your belly, that's another thought too. If there's really no wrong way to get there at all, yeah, you might sit up, sip your tea. <laughs> Who knows, take a stretch. <sighs> yeah, maybe you wanna do a strong thing on your way down, a plank, <laughs> chaturanga. Who knows? And once you find your belly again, let's slide that left knee up towards the left side of the chest. And again, like maybe that blanket is a thing that would be helpful, so you could like, you know, kind of ball it up, tuck it underneath that left hip so that there's a little bit of pressure there. Okay, with all this sitting we've been doing, with all the stress we've been experiencing, another kind of like, you know, not so great side effect is that we are tightening our psoas and our iliacus muscles, these muscles that kind of run through the hip. All right, the muscles that help to lift our legs, <laughs> make us walk and run. So sometimes a little bit of pressure right into you know, the side of your pelvic bowl is just what the doctor ordered. Good. Okay, let's stay here for a little while. Nice, about 10 more breaths or so here and you might extend that left leg out long into the side if your hip and your low back enjoy that sort of uh, shape. <laughs> Good, and if you're keeping that knee bent, that's great too. Let's all just focus in on how things are on the eyes, the shoulders, and the jaw. Good, maybe three more breaths. And nice and easy going breaths.
Right, good. And then extend that left leg nice and long behind you. We're gonna prop ourselves up onto the right forearm now and reach back for your left foot with your left hand. Okay, making that connection if you can. Yeah, and just kind of play around with this. Take a few moments. That heel might draw really close to the sitting bone or even out to the side of the hip. Your knee is in charge. <laughs> if your knee starts talking to you in like a not so great way, go ahead and release it and set yourself back down. Good, maybe three breaths more. Nice, All right, and then go ahead and release that foot back behind you. Let's take the hands under the shoulders and shift back up onto hands and knees. And as you find your hands and knees, we're gonna take that weird little like cross-legged cat and cow situation again. So this time your left knee is gonna tuck behind the right knee. And just another little add-on if you're feeling it, if you, want, if you wanna do something more complicated than this already is, you might also turn your hands around here and point your fingertips back towards your knees or not. Maybe that's just like, whoa, no, I don't, no thank you, <laughs> way too much. Okay, but thinking about finding those pelvic tilts here and really noticing what's happening around your right sitting bone. On the outside of your right hip. And a few more breaths. Right, good. If your hands are turned around, fingertips towards the knees, turn them back, untuck. And let's come to sit back on the heels here now. All right, and I think it's, uh, yeah, so let's practice Mula Banda, <laughs> everybody's favorite. <laughs> Mula Banda is kind of like a Kegel, kind of, but um, instead of just kind of like squeezing in, you're also lifting up. So you're thinking about just lifting the pelvic floor. Nobody can see what you're doing here, which is kind of, uh, kind of great. You can place your hands right on your lap. Maybe your palms are facing up. Right, and close your eyes. And just think about maybe like 10 of these. So squeezing the pelvic floor in and up. And kind of contracting everything upward. And try to keep your breath flowing as you contract the pelvic floor up and in. And maybe three more of these. Good. All right. So then go ahead and just allow yourself to let go of Mula Banda. All right. And we're going to take a standing forward fold next. So you're just going to kind of unwind yourself, tuck your toes underneath, shift your hips up, drop the head down. Good. And I'm thinking of maybe a little bit of an extended hold in the standing forward fold today. Um, if you happen to have a wall nearby that has a little bit of like open space, you might set your butt against the wall as you fold forward. Or you might even consider turning around so that your upper back, the back of your head touches the wall. But none of that's required. You can hang out in the middle of the room too. Nice. I see a bunch of you like back it up in the forward fold. Awesome. Good. As you get there, take notice of the tension that you might be holding on to in your neck, your shoulders, your head, and maybe give those shoulders a little bit of a wiggle. Your head moves in like a little figure eight. Uh, gentle, gentle movement here. Yeah, and maybe you're even collecting up your elbows and just rocking the upper body side to side. Good. And soften your tongue, soften your eyes again. Good. 
Nice, everybody. Yeah, good. Let's spend another minute and a half or so pulling forward here. Good. And you might decide to soften the knees a little bit if you're noticing a lot of tension along the backs of your legs. Maybe you want a big hamstring stretch and you're grabbing a hold of your big toes and kind of drawing the elbows out wide to draw your chest in towards your thigh. Perfect, everyone. Last few big breaths. Mm. Right, and then let's take those feet out just about as wide as your mat. Okay, we're gonna practice a little bit of dynamic movement if you're feeling it. So setting the hips down as far as they wanna go into something kind of squat-like. <laughs> Good, and then folding yourself back up into that nice relaxed in forward fold. Okay, you might hang out in one pose or the other if it feels like just the place to be. Maybe you want to sit in the squat for a while, or maybe you want to keep moving. Right, the choice is always yours, how much stillness you choose to take, how much movement you need. Uh, take your time. And if you are moving, see if you can keep your eyes kind of soft through this movement. And a few more breaths. Right. And if settling into a squat feels like a thing you want to do, maybe a few minutes here, or not minutes, ha, a few breaths here. <laughs> a few minutes would be a lot. Just know that if you want to sit down on something, you're always welcome to bring your rolled up blanket, your block on your hips. Also, like sitting on a stool or a ball or something can be really nice for your squat. Right. A couple more breaths. All right, and then take some time, fold yourself forward again. <sighs> take a big breath out and you shake up the head and like move your hips from side to side a little bit. Right, and then back into downward facing dog. And from downward facing dog, you might decide to like pedal things out. Good, and we'll make our way back onto our bellies eventually. If you would like to find your high plank pose, go ahead and yeah, find that strong pose for a breath or two. Feeling the lower belly lifting, yeah. Good, the pelvis lifting, and then you can go ahead and settle yourself all the way down to the floor. And as you do that, we're gonna come into our little sphinx pose. Um, so actually a couple of options. If sphinx where you're up on your elbows is not a pose that you like to practice for belly reasons, for low back reasons, take your hands, place them on the floor and rest your head on the backs of your hands. It's a nice way to just find some nice relaxed opening in the front of the body. But otherwise coming up into your sphinx, elbows under the shoulders. Good, and we'll take a few lion's breaths if it suits you. So breathing in nice and calm through the nose, really filling up. And as you exhale, stick out the tongue, cross the eyes, make it forceful. Good, a few more breaths like this.
Good. And then why don't we walk the elbows on over to the left. Okay, you're looking for a nice big stretch through the right side of your low belly and that great hip, back. Yeah, if you wanna turn your head to look past the left shoulder down towards the left foot, you're welcome to do that. Oh my gosh, Linda, your cat is <laughs> so cute. Oh, nice. Good, walk yourself back through to the center and on over to the other side. Nice big stretch through that left hip now. Wonderful. Good. All right, come on back through to the center. And why don't we all set ourselves down for a moment here, chest to the floor. Couple of thoughts. <laughs> so you might want to take an active locust pose, bringing your arms alongside the body, big toes towards each other, and just lifting, kind of balancing your entire body on that low belly. <laughs> Good, that might be a thing. Good. You might choose to stay resting. Resting is what you need. Or full pranam, resting with your arms extended past your head, too. And if you have chosen the active pose, see if you can keep your breathing nice and full and notice the subtle rocking of your body just because you're breathing. And we'll spend about another minute or so doing that sort of thing. And if you want to come up and down and up and down, you're certainly welcome to come out of it whenever you need to. Good. And I also just want to throw out there the possibility of a seal pose, which is where you come back up into sphinx with your elbows under your shoulders. But then you turn your hands so that your thumbs are parallel, your fingers are pointing out, and you press into the hands to lift the elbows away from the floor. Yeah, so this big deep stretch right down the center line of the body. Good, right into the low belly. Nice. Yeah, and you might even look up here, stretching the throat. <laughs> Yeah, and you almost always know when it's time to set yourself back down. So once you hit that point, go ahead, lower down. Good. We're going to make our way back into either hands and knees or a downward facing dog. <laughs> Good. All right, and I think we're going to take a... Um, a swan or a pigeon pose today, which is like something that we almost never do in my yin classes anymore, but um, why not? So let's take uh, the right leg up and back behind you and then bring your right knee in between your hands. Okay, if you get there and your right knee is just like, I'm sorry, no thank you, <laughs> you can always roll down onto your back um, and cross your right ankle over your left knee for a figure four. It does a lot of the same thing for the back of the body at least. Good. And if you are in this pigeon pose with your right knee forward, think about staying lifted for a moment, maybe pressing your hands into the floor, feeling that nice big stretch through the low belly, through the front of that left hip. Good. See if you can keep your tongue, your eyes relaxed as you do that. Good. Maybe you need to let a big exhale out. <laughs> Good. Yeah, and you'll know when it's time to settle the upper body down if you are in your um, traditional pigeon or swan. So set yourself down, really allow your attention to move into that right hip or wherever it's gonna go. <laughs> there could be any place really. Okay, our bodies are built differently and we hold on to things differently. And so there's no one right way to feel any of this. There's no one right way to look in all of this. As you settle in, as you breathe, all of your attention down into that pelvic bowl.
Mm. Good. Another minute or so here. And just choose your favorite variation. Maybe it's you with your chest down towards that right thigh. Maybe you really like that feeling of being lifted in your pigeon pose. Yeah. Good, another deep breath or two. Good, if you are lowered down, lift yourself back up. And we're gonna rock over onto the right hip and swing that left leg around. And as you swing the left leg around, see if you can snuggle your knees kind of together. Okay, if that's a lot of the knees, extend that right leg nice and long in front of you and just kind of tuck that left knee on top of the right. Good, and then let's take our hands and um, let's just kind of massage our own like hip meat. <laughs> so massaging your hips, maybe you're even digging your fingers like kind of like into the sides of your glutes a little bit. Ah, nothing like a good self butt massage, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you might move up and around your sacrum here, that bony plate at the base of your low, um, at the spine, at the low back. Okay, just thinking about yeah, giving yourself a little bit of love. Great, right, and then take your thumbs and rest them in your hip creases and sit up nice and tall. And then maybe a nice gentle fold forward here if you're feeling it. Okay, if you do want to keep that bottom leg folded under, you're welcome to. Okay, it's a nice way to sort of intensify things through the hips if you feel like you need or want that. <laughs> and then you can always let the arms come out in front of you and just sort of settle. Right, and now just take notice of the tip of the tailbone and the top of the head. And think about reaching the tip of the tailbone down towards the floor and reaching the crown of the head out and away from the tip of the tailbone. Creating a lot of length there and some attention on that center line. Nice, a few more breaths. All right, if you're folded forward, bring yourself back up. And let's just unwind the legs and maybe shake them out a little bit. Sometimes my legs need a good jiggle. Good little wiggling around after all of that. All right, let's take our hands down to the floor behind us. And a couple of thoughts here. You might drop your knees from side to side. That's one place to go. You might also lift the hips. This is gonna be helpful for where we're gonna be going in a little bit. So um, if your wrists and your shoulders are up for it, maybe consider lifting up into this reverse tabletop. Couple breaths. All right, and then from here, just lower yourself down if you're lifted. And we're gonna make our way into the pigeon with the left knee forward. So you might come back through hands and knees or a downward dog, or maybe you just feel like, you know, winging that right leg around behind you. Any amount of movement on your way there is welcome. Or maybe you're just getting there. Good, and then as you find that pigeon shape, just notice how this side differs. For like a good year of my life, I could do this on one side, but not the other, <laughs> because my knee was upset. <laughs> so 
So if you are experiencing that, feel free to just do the figure four, you know? Took me a long time to learn that nobody's gonna hand me a trophy for doing all like the uh, <laughs> fancy looking shapes. <laughs> and that this is really a practice of honoring your own, um, your own physical body, your own needs, your life force, whatever's gonna help you there. Good, just breathe deeply and feel what's happening, the pelvic bowl. Good, behind the eyes. And if you are ready to set yourself down, you can get there. Maybe you want to stay lifted for a while. The choice is always up. Good, and maybe 10 more breaths, and those breaths might be you lifting back up again, or maybe it's you just committing to a little bit more stillness and relaxation, folding forward. Big breath or two here. All right, and if you are lowered down to the floor, start to pick yourself up again. You rock on over onto that left hip. You're just gonna swing that right leg around yeah, so that the right knee is on top and that left leg can extend out long. And once again, just give your hips a nice little rub here. Dig your fingers into those tender points on the sides of your glutes. Oh. <laughs> um, if you carry tension in your butt cheeks, <laughs> this might feel like a lot. Right? So make sure you're actually breathing through this. Make sure that your breath is really full. Perfect. Yeah, and then we're going to fold forward here again, if that's all right with your hips, your knees, your back. Just taking time to really find space through the lumbar spine, okay, around those sitting bones, the outer hip. And notice your breathing. Does it feel full? Does it feel shallow? Any placid or shaky? Okay, and just let your breath be what it is. Let your body be what it, what it is and stay with yourself. And a few more breaths. Good. 
Good, and then start to lift yourself on up and out of this one. And let's swing that right leg around to the side. Oh boy, and this is yet another pose I don't often uh, bring us to in yin, but this is a really big one for um, the CV meridian conception vessel meridian. So we're gonna take a camel, oh God, a camel pose. <laughs> so essentially, you know, it's the most important part of this is that your hips are right above your knees, more or less, and you're feeling a lift of the lower ribs away from the top of the pelvis. I mean, that's like half the battle. And then the rest of it is this really gentle broadening of the collarbone, super gentle. And maybe, maybe, maybe you're dropping your head back here. It's a thought, it's a thought, but not a requirement. If that creates too much intensity, just pick the head up and look forward. Breathe deeply and let your belly expand out with the breath. See how far it can go. Maybe we'll just hold for another five breaths or so here. Good, and then let's come on out of this. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> and let's hug around ourselves, the right arm underneath, round the upper back, drop the head down towards the elbows. And just give yourself a little bit of a rock here if you can on the tops of your feet or ankles. All right, and then open up those arms nice and wide. Take a big stretch across the heart. And we'll just lace the other arm underneath. Now this time the left arm's underneath. And this nice little hug around. Great, and then let's open up again, those arms nice and wide, fingers spread wide here. Good, and then allow the hands to come down to the lap. And if you've got some glasses on, go ahead and remove them just for a moment. Okay, we're gonna rub our hands together really fast. Okay, creating that friction, creating some heat, some warmth there. Good, a few more moments of that really rapid, movement of the hands and then let's take the heels of our hands and rest them on our eye sockets Good. Right, and then take your hand so that your thumb is on the underside of your jaw and your index finger is right up where the hinge of the jaw is. And we're going to take these fingers down the chin or down the jaw to the chin and then back up towards the sides. Good. So a few times here, this little bit of massage. Right, and then let's set one finger down here in the crease of our chin. A few deep breaths. Right, and then let's trace a line down the center. We're stopping right here in the center of the throat. Good. And then take all four of your fingers and just slide them down through the hollow in between your collarbones, right into your heart space. See if you can like walk them around a little bit there. Just like a little subtle massage, a little something. And you're going to keep walking them down all the way to this point here, um, right at the center of your rib cage, right below the breastbone. I forget, I forget what this is called, this part of the body. <sighs> The xiphoid process, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> Good, and then we're going to walk the fingertips out in the middle of the belly. Yeah. <laughs> and now let's just like give our belly a massage. Let's just do this. <laughs> so from the center line out towards the sides. Good. 
okay, starting high, moving low, moving like all the way down to the low, low belly. <sighs> it's like this nice, gentle, loving massage. And I won't make you massage your pelvic floor today, but maybe later you want to do that. I don't know. <laughs> Up to you. Good. And then take your hands and press them into the tops of your thighs just for a couple breaths. Good. And then from here, we're going to find our backs. Hooray. Find your back and make sure you have a blanket or a block nearby. And why don't we come into a restorative bridge pose next. So in your restorative bridge pose, take that thing, your blanket, your block, whatever it is, and place that underneath your, um, underneath your pelvic area. So ideally it's supporting like your tailbone and the low part of your sacrum. Maybe it's up a little higher. Everybody's set up a little differently. <laughs> so do what needs to be done. <laughs> In your restorative bridge pose, your knees might be bent this whole time with the soles of your feet touching the floor. Good. You might decide to extend one of your legs out long as you keep one knee bent and one foot down. Maybe both legs extend long. Right, and as you get yourself settled into this restorative bridge pose, notice if there's any tension around your eyes, if there's any tension in your belly, any tension in the chest. And it's so funny because I think I, I always used to think of these poses as like a way to force tension out. <laughs> and in some ways, um, yeah, they do kind of force us into at least shapes that will, um, help us to move tension out, but I don't know. The more I practice, the more I realize that it's just about being aware of things, right? Being aware of where we're holding things, being aware of where we feel a little stuck or blocked. Yoga is great, but it's not a magic bullet, right? This is just an opportunity for us to really get um, clear about you know what's going on physically for us what's going on below the surface so that the rest of our life can um, can sort of um, become our practice right the rest of our life can become what we need our own creation Beautiful. Of course, any kind of movements are welcome here. If you want to send your feet up towards the ceiling, oh my gosh, do it. <laughs> yeah, nice. Awesome, everyone. Beautiful. Right, if you are in the restorative bridge pose and it feels amazing, you're more than welcome to hang there for the last few minutes of practice. But if you want something else, if you want a couple of reclined twists, if your body is craving some like happy baby action, yeah, that's a nice one to go to. Constructive rest soles of the feet on the floor, knees dropping in towards each other, or maybe um, 
Oh yeah, a recline bound angle might feel nice too. Soles of the feet together, knees drop out wide. We're just Shavasana, there's always Shavasana. And if you are, um, if you're reclined, you might take one of your hands onto your low belly and one of your hands up towards your middle belly, your heart, kind of resting your fingertips on the center line. Breathing and imagining that kind of life force energy moving from the center of your pelvic bowl down around the bottom of your pelvic floor, up the front of the body and up to the eyes on the inhale and then on the exhale down from the eyes, collecting at the chin all the way down through the throat, the heart, the guts, back down to the pelvic floor. You might breathe in this way or maybe you just wanna let yourself have a chance to um, not do, to just be without any agenda. So whether we know it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not, we are creative beings. We have the power to birth and shape all manner of different things. To bring our ideas to fruition, to sustain them, to nourish them. Whether or not we know it, we are creative. Beautiful. So taking a few more long, luxurious breaths, <laughs> maybe filling all the way up and stopping at the top to notice what it is to be full. And then breathe out nice and slow all the way to the bottom where you might stop to notice what it is to be empty. Good, and then we'll take some time just to roll over onto one side or the other if that's all right for your shoulders, your neck. <laughs> Good, curling up into this little ball, drawing your forehead down towards your knees. Chin in towards the throat. Mm, wonderful. And as you're ready to come on up, then just come on up. Sitting up nice and tall. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and as you get there, Let's, um, let's rub our hands together again one more time. I'm really liking this today. I think because I'm a little cold, <laughs> but also there's just something about knowing that you can like create that warmth yourself <laughs> in some ways. All right, so we're gonna rub those hands together for just about another, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. <laughs> Aww. Awesome, and then let's take our hands and place them here on our heart and take a deep breath in, lifting the heart up into the hands, broadening those collarbones. 
And as you breathe out, drop your head down towards your hands and your heart, honoring your practice, your community, each other. Namaste. And happy day of mommies if you celebrate. <laughs> um, it's really nice to see all your faces. Yeah, tomorrow morning on Facebook Live, I'm going to be offering a jaw practice. If your jaw is like killing you, if, yeah, if you're doing this a lot, <laughs> oh, we're going to do some self massage. We're going to do a mudra and some meditation for your jaw. It's at seven o'clock, but it'll just be on there all the time. So find it whenever you need it. Um, oh, so nice to see you all. Mm, enjoy your day. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Happy Mother's Bye. Day. Bye. Happy Mother's Day.